Okay, let's go over to the table and look at what we're doing today. Oh, that's not the table. Okay, so today we are making the section right here for our copper fountain pen that we've been doing. Here's the cap and the body from last week. If you didn't watch last week or the week before, you may want to go check them out. We cover all the tooling as well as we uh, drill and tap the body inside and outside for the cap and body and as well the inside threads for the section. So if you haven't seen that, they are posted both in the live and a replay. And today we're going to make the section. And what the section is, is it's your grip that you hold the pen with. And it also holds your nib and your converter all in one little unit here so that it can go into your body. So we got to turn this into this, which is a whole lot of fun that you're going to see here. So what we're going to use today um, on the inside of the section where the nib threads in, we're going to use four different drill bits. Five if you want to count the six millimeter for the tenon cutter. So we're going to use technically five drill bits for that. I'll go over the sizes here in just a minute. Um, we're going to use the tenon cutter to cut the outside tenon here for the body threads. Those are M10. Then we're going to use our M10 die as well as the niche system with the die holder uh, for that. And we're going to use the niche system with the tap holder for tapping the inside threads for the nib. This is a Yovo nib. Uh, it's J-O-W-O. -O, and it uses some very fine threads in there. So we're going to do that. Now, other than that, pretty basic stuff. We need a drill chuck, which we have here. Um, and then our collet chuck is how we will hold this. But let's talk briefly about the nib and what we're doing here. So I'm going to take this apart. What you're looking at very blown up here is this part of the nib right here, the housing. So that's basically everything where the gold stops, everything back. And what, what we want to look at and why this is important is this is why we have so many drills. So it may be kind of hard to see on camera, I don't know, but there's basically a lip here, very small lip, then another lip here, and then one size all the way back to the threads, then the threads, and then a small step down to the final one here. Now the drill bits I'm going to use, and you can use alternatively, there are some letter bits and maybe even some metrics that'll work. For the small hole all the way through, which is this part here, I'm going to be using a 932nd. Then for the, the flat part here up to leading up to the threads, I'm going to use a 516th. For this long lip, I'm going to use a 2164. And for this little tiny lip on the end here, I'm going to use a 3 8 Now, to give you some measurements to start with, because remember, this is all um, for your, making your first one and kind of getting started. For the 930 seconds, we're going to drill all the way through. But don't do that too soon, because we need to do that 6 millimeter for the, the tenon first. For the 5 16 this one here, we're going to drill. Uh, I wrote down 13.5, but we're actually going to change that to around 12 or 12.5. So go ahead and write 12 in your notes, if you're taking notes. If you're not, don't worry about it. For the 2164, that's this part here of the nib. We're going to go 2.5 millimeters or 2.3. And then this very end lip, we're going to go 1.2 to 1.5. And these are all very general because, you know, if you made this a little longer, it's not going to hurt anything. It's just not going to be as snug a fit. What we're trying to do is replicate the shape of this housing through every step. And then of course, this is the threads that we're gonna tap. So once we have the holes all lined up, we will tap that and we should be able to screw this guy in just like this into the section. And that's what our goal is. So to do that, we're gonna first do the outside of the section. We're gonna cut a tenon, cut the M10 threads, then we'll flip her around and do the inside. So let's get set up to do that. Now, first thing we're going to do is set up the tenon cutter. If you didn't see my video last week, uh, I'm going to set this up real quick for use. 
but obviously there's more info. The tenon cutter comes with setup bushings. That's what this is, a setup bushing from size nine to 15. So that's your range of sizes you can do, M9 to M15. And how this works is you wanna loosen. And this does not come with a drill bit. So I misspoke last week. And sometimes that happens when you're live, you think you remember one thing and you're wrong. So don't hold me to anything I say here. I'm trying to do my best to remember. So bear with me. But if I misspeak, I'm going by memory. I don't have it in front of me. All right, so to do this, you wanna loosen the blade, which I kinda of just did and then I retightened it. You wanna slide the setup bushing into the carbide cutter. And you want that carbide cutter nice and flat to the bushing, but you don't want it so tight you can't spin it. You want it, you want there to be no gap or no air, but you don't want it to be so tight that it locks it up. So I like to get it lined up like I like, and then I kind of hold this blade with my finger and just gently snug these. Make sure I'm good here. And if I'm good, I can lock it down. And then one more time. So that's a pretty good setup. If you look at it, oh, looks like I tweaked a little. So I got a little gap on this side now. So actually I need to redo that real quick. It's hard to do when I'm trying to point it towards the camera. So I'm gonna get it. Looks pretty good there. Hold her down. Lock her down. All right. Now I can snug it down. Now you wanna snug this down and remember, this is a carbide cutter on the end of this thing. So you want to make sure this is all snug. You don't want it to be spinning on your lathe or get caught on your tailstock and spin because this is a carbide cutter. This could do some damage. You could even cut your pinky. Um, so make sure that's locked down nicely. You, you can see my setup bushing still moves freely. And now I can take that off. So I'm ready to do my tenon when we get to that stage. Let's go. Let's prep this. And then we can cut this and begin this whole process. Now, this is kind of an important part. So listen up here. The length of your section. Now, remember, this was just the end of our cutoff of this blank. And we didn't trim it necessarily to a certain size. But the length of your section is very important because you only have so much room in your cap for your nib to go. And if you make your section an extra 10 millimeters Without accounting for that in here, you're gonna smash your nib into the top of the cap. So you're, you need to have some sort of measurements that you're following. That way, the depth of your cap works well with the depth of your section and your nib, and they're not too short or too long. And so we are using this one kind of as a model, and that's what I've been giving you guys um, measurements off of. So I'm gonna do the same thing here, and this, I know, because this is kind of the size I use a lot, this is about 30 millimeters. So from the front of the section to the back of the threads, I'm at 30.4, so close enough. So I want to make this 30 millimeters. Now, one thing I don't have here is really a flat edge. So I'm going to go over and put this on the lathe and kind of square up one end and then measure 30, and then we're going to cut this down. So we want this to be 30 total with these threads when we're done. And the reason being is we know our cap has enough clearance for that section. If I made it this whole length, I mean, look how long it is. I would surely, one, I'd have a funny looking pen because the section would be so long, but I'd surely bash my nib into the top of the cap. Now you can make adjustments if you want this longer or shorter by adjusting your cap size of how deep your cap hole is. So you can change things all you want. Just make sure you make adjustments to all the parts that it affects. So let's go over to the lathe and square this off. And then we're going to do some uh, measuring and trimming this sucker. Boom, I'm back. All right, so what I'm going to do is just put this in and lock it down so I can get a flat edge. Now, I should have cut this on a better saw but I cut it on my bandsaw, which isn't great, and uh, it's not square. But if it was square, that'd be a lot easier, but you can kind of square it up here. 
So I'm putting everything in a collet chuck. It's just easier for me. Let me wear my glasses so I can see. Whoop. Every time. All right. So I'm just going to square up these edges. And if you don't have a square edge, if you can hear that noise, it's kind of a wobble sound. And you can kind of see my tool bouncing a little here. I kind of know it's not square based on that. And obviously I'm not going to get a perfect square with a handheld carbide tool, but I can get it a lot closer. And you hear there's no, no wobble, my tool's not moving. So that's close enough for me. While I've got this in here, I'm going to go ahead and throw in my center drill. And I'm using a number two center drill, but you can use whatever size is comfortable. Uh, two or three is a great size. One works fine, it's just smaller. And all these um, tools like the center drill, the tap and dies, the tenon cutters, whatever. Thank you, Amy. You're good, I'm overhead. Um, they're all on the homepage of Turner, so don't, you don't have to necessarily write it all down, but they are there if you want to see what, what I'm using. So I'm just going to give myself a little center hole here for guidance later. And now I can take this thing out. Okay. So I want to measure this to 30 millimeters. So I'm going to lock this down. 30.27, that'll work. And this is the my flat side. You can see there's still some cut marks that were a little lighter than my center, but I'm pretty flat. This side's all jacked up. So I'm gonna cut this side. So I'm just making a mark. All right. And what I'm gonna do is put this back in the chuck. And if you guys have any questions, I've got Amy moderating today. Um, she'll answer any questions she can in the chat, but she can also shout out your questions here so I can hear them because I'm not watching the chat uh, because I'm doing this. So she'll let me know if you have any questions, so feel free. And what I'm going to do is I've got to cut this off. So I'm going to use this, you could use a saw or a parting tool or whatever. I've got my little um, diamond cutter here. So what's up? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you would just make it to whatever the size you need is. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, absolutely, you could make it pretty easily. And if anyone is wanting a tenon cutter, I think we're either out or almost out. Um, we should have them back in very soon. So just jump on the out of stock reminder and what happened is I'll email you when we get them. And we are making extra sets. We make the tenon cutter. Uh, we are making extra sets of bushings for those who got them a long time ago when they didn't come with the whole set. So there again, I'm just going to try to do my best to flatten this out as much as I can. Doesn't have to be perfect. And it certainly won't be. But I'm just creeping up to my line. My line is right here, so I'm just kind of getting as close as I can to my line. And yeah, that should be pretty good. All right, now I'm going to center drill this one. And I will try not to get my head in the way because I'm very known to do that. And the center drill just gives you a hopefully a better start to your drilling rather than if you just put the drill bit up to it. 
Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is load my six millimeter drill bit into the, the drill chuck. This is for the tenon cutter. I need it to go all the way through because this is a fairly small part. I need it to go all the way through so that my guide pin on the tenon cutter can go all the way through. Okay, I'm gonna slow that down just a hair. So it's not a, a crazy amount of drilling or difficult drill because it's so small. I do like to back it up and clear it though, because we get all that goop on our drill bit. Okay, we got a question, go ahead. Uh, you mean like the different sizes? Like the five and the six, or, or are all the sixes the same? So we're making for a size six. Uh, six will be different than five, but I would imagine all the sixes are the same, but I, I don't know that I've ever compared them, so that would be something to check out. But I can't imagine they would make different sizes of the same size nib. Size six is probably the most popular one we see uh, for people using. Now, I'm just gonna get my tool rest out of the way to free up some space here. And I'm grabbing the tenon cutter. Now, I wanna make sure you guys can see this. The tenon cutter is a lifesaver for not only time, but accuracy and speed. You could do this manually by hand, but you'd need to start and stop a lot to make sure you don't cut too far or too little. And so far, uh, since I've been using this tenon cutter, every time I've taken my time and set it well, which has been every time I think, um, I've had a perfect tenon that has worked really well. So I hope I didn't just do myself in by saying that, but it's been really great. All right. So I just put a little bit of fluid in there because I want this, this shaft to flow freely. I always like to check it like this because uh, sometimes if my drill bit just breaks through and it has a little nubbin on the other side, it'll bind up on your pilot shaft and you don't want that to be the case. So I can now load this guy up get that started. And I'm just going to get it close. Oh, there we go. I got a couple millimeters in between the blank and the tenon cutter. Now, keep in mind, this is a carbide cutter. This is metal. You might want to just round these corners off for your own to do in case this ever spins on you. But this is where I just cut my pinky earlier. I went down and I caught it on the corner. So I'm going to take a file to these later. And if you have one of these, I'd recommend you do the same thing just for safety, but I like to keep a hold of my, my drill chuck and I'm out of the way. So if this spins, hopefully I won't get caught. So just keep that in mind. I'll hold it this way so you guys can see, but I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. And, oh, I didn't talk about tenon length. So the tenon on that green one that we're measuring is about eight millimeters. And what I like to do, and this is very, kind of uh, winging it, is I like to measure how far I want to go and then kind of look at my tool. So if I look at this tenon cutter cutter, the screw on the tailstock side of the screw is exactly eight and a half millimeters. So I know if I go that deep, I'm about eight and a half millimeters and that's good with me. I could try to mark it. I could try to mark the blank, you know, up here. But to me, this is just as easy because this isn't moving and everything else will be. So that's how I'm going to know when to stop on my cut here. Now we're just going to slowly feed this in and we are, we are cutting, you know, the alumilite. Make sure your hand is clear of that little guy. Now the problem is it very quickly becomes hard to see. So I'm going to back up and I'm going to use my brush. Don't stick your finger in there. There's a carbide cutter. I didn't mention that. And it's that initial catch that would spin it. So you gotta be real careful. Oh, it's trying to spin on me. Okay, just a tiny bit more. 
and that's enough. Now I could always trim that off if I went too far, so I'm not worried about that. But this is gonna be an opportunity for you to see why we like this shaft to be loose. Because you can glue it in and it'll work fine, but it also works nice to have it loose like this. Because now I could leave it in here as a little bit of strength. If I didn't have it loose, I could always stick a six millimeter drill bit in there just to give this little tendon a little strength because we only have a couple millimeters there. There's not a lot of material. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a little relief with my carbide cutter. I'm gonna cut just leading up to it. Just a little bit of an entrance relief or you could do a chamfer, you could use a file, or you could use sandpaper. But let's see if the camera picked that up. That's about as close as I can get it. So you can see there's a little bit of a chamfer there. And then I'm gonna take my diamond, pointy diamond, and kind of do the same at the back. Now don't take off too much because it's already thin and we're already kind of in a fragile state with this. The next thing I'm gonna do, once I remove this tenon cutter, is I'm gonna grab my water with some 800 and I'm gonna sand this tenon just for a few seconds. And the reason I'm doing this is when I go to thread this, if I have it, you know, pre-sanded a little bit and smooth, I think it'll make my threads better. And I could be totally wrong. It might not do anything, but I think it does. So I'm going to keep doing it. So you can do you. How are we doing? Any other questions, Amy? Oh, that's a good question. So the question was, what are the diameters of the tenon if you don't have the tenon cutter? And actually, we can look at that right now. Let me, just to give you an idea. And I'd be happy to uh, make a little short of this later and post it so you can see all the different ones. So this is your M10 diameter and it is 9.97 so practically 10 but 9.97 i don't know if that is the variation of it's probably plus or minus a tiny bit so probably 10. and we are doing an m14 cap and body which we did last week and that is 14 no 13.96 so basically the tenon is the size of your threading. So M10 is M10, 9 is 9. Hope that helps. But that makes it easy for you. Now, if I was going to do this without the tenon cutter, I'd probably either find something that, like I've seen people use wrenches that fit the right size, and that way you can quickly test the tenon. Um, but it's tough to stop and measure over and over again. It takes a lot of time. Good question, whoever that was. All right, let's get this just a little better right here. Now, you could do this in a different order, but I don't recommend it because if we do the other side first, we're gonna drill this slightly larger than the M6 and we would um, not have our guide for the tenon cutter. So if you weren't using the tenon cutter, that would be fine. But since we are, we, we wanna do this section first. Let's go to the table and grab our, our dies we need. Okay, we're gonna use the niche system here. And I'm gonna use the middle size die holder. I'll lock that in. All right. And then I need the M10, the M10 die. And I want to put it in and get my alignment screws here. And you want to tighten those in. One, it helps them keep, keep it aligned, and two, it keeps the die from spinning. 
Well, looks like I got it a little wonky. There we go. All right. So that is what I'm going to need. Okay, so that just goes in there. Now we get this up nice and close. And what we're doing is we're just cutting these threads. So right here, we are going to use the die. I'm not going to run the machine. I do put a little cutting fluid of some sort. This is WD-40. But you can see I can freely spin this and I can freely spin this. So it kind of works out well. So you want to get the die up to the piece and push forward as you spin. And you'll see those curly cues coming out of there. Hopefully you can see them. And if you come back, they cut loose. Now what I like about this is now I can spin this freely and get rid of these threads that are in the way or the, the cuttings, whatever they are, shavings. I can keep going, back it up, keep going, back it up. And I like to back it up before I get to the end and try to get these out because I want to try to get my die up to the shoulder as close as possible. Back it up, get up close. And one thing is do not over tighten that. When you get to that shoulder, be real aware of where you're at and stop because like I said, there's not a lot of material there and it's real easy to snap that tenon right off. The reason I think sections are so hard is because they're so fragile. You can uh, over drill things or snap a tenon off really easily. And then you get to start over. <clears throat> Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this die. And what it does is it's cut a little different on the backside so you can get your threads closer up to the shoulder by doing this. So I always start with the die with the writing on it. That's more of the gradual start. The die on the back has more of a, and I don't know the technical term, but it has more of a uh, flat cut to it. So I want to get those alignment screws just right. Okay. Now, very careful to start this. I certainly don't want to cross thread it, so I'm going to just kind of press it on there and see where I'm at. Looks pretty good. And I shouldn't have, let's see, I shouldn't have a lot of, I think I'm a little tight here. I shouldn't have a lot of uh, fresh threads. Where are we at? My alignments aren't on. Oh, way off. Wow, that really spun. That means they were they were going to spin me out there. Okay, that should be better. Okay. So I'm not cutting new threads, but I'm cutting further than I was before. So once I get this started, it should just kind of thread on. And you'll get tiny little bits, but you shouldn't have giant curly cues like you did the first time. Now, more at the end because you're actually cutting material you didn't cut the first time. But see, I got a little further to the shoulder, and my threads are going to be a little cleaner. There we go. And they look really good. Now I can brush this off. And I'm going to take my 800. And just give this a real gentle, quick sand. And if you remember from before, I like to just take the very sharp tips off of my threads. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here. So, I can brush that off. Let me grab the body and we'll give it a test fit. Now you want to be careful of debris um, 
both in the body or on the, the section here. If there's chunks or lots of dust, which I don't know if you can see it, but it's like squeegeeing out the wetness and there's a lot of dust in there. So I'm not gonna overly tighten this till I clean it, but that works pretty good and it lines up really nicely. Threads feel really smooth, so we're in good shape. All right. And see that relief I cut at the beginning, you almost can't see it because it actually moves the material and threads it. And I didn't cut it quite deep enough, but I could cut more if I wanted. But we are now ready to flip it and do the inside, which is the fun part. So we doing good. Any questions I missed? Yep. Boy, it's weird I can see with my glasses. Makes it a lot easier. All right, let's flip this thing around. This is a, I mean, it's a pretty small piece. This whole section is only 30 millimeters long, so you don't have a lot to hold it on. Now, I don't need this uh, pilot shaft anymore. See, there's, there's already junk in there holding that thing up. But that's our little tenon. That's now threaded, and we're going to flip it around and lock it down. <laughs> and I'm going to let a little tiny bit stick out, but not much. I don't really need a lot sticking out, or any for that matter. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's go back. Let's go back to the table real quick and grab what we need. This is going to be we are going to use this again, but we're going to mostly use the drill bits and drill chuck. So, we are done with this. That can go in there. We're done with this tap. I'm sorry, this die. And we're going to use the tap. So, I'm going to put on the tap holder. When we get there, we're going to use the uh, tap for that nib. It's a 7.4 by 0.5 thread. Very, very fine thread. I'm going to go ahead and get that ready. I like to remove my dies so I don't forget. One, so I can blow them out and clean them. And two, I'll be looking for this later and wonder where it is. So that needs to be cleaned, but that we can do later. All right, so we got that. We're going to use our four drill bits. I'm taking those over to the lathe. There's our cap. Get that up there. And then we'll be back for that one. Okay. Now, let's do this. So this is, this is where it gets important. Um, so this is, here, let's go this way. This is how our holes going into it here. So the first hole we're going to drill all the way through because it's the smallest. We're going in size. And that's this very last little bit here beyond the threads. Oh, you can't see that at all. OK, let me start over. So our first hole is going through here. It's this last little bit beyond the threads. We're going to drill all the way through. Then we're going to drill our second hole up to here. So that's the critical measurement. This one obviously is smaller, so it doesn't matter. These are just at the lip. The critical drill is the second one, which is your 5 16 in this case. If I drill too far, then my hole would come back and I would eat up my threads and I'd have less to thread it, assuming that my nib is stopping here like it should. If I drill too short, then my threads will start too soon and be up here and my nib will stick out. So. If I do this wrong, you'll get to see what I'm talking about. If I do it right, hopefully you won't get to see it. But this is your critical measurement. So when you go to measure your nib, if you're replicating the nib to do this, you need to measure from the very tip of the housing to where those threads start. Now that's 13 millimeters. Uh, I think I have my drill bit marked. Oh boy. 
So I'm right at 13 on my mark, which I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Uh, so that should be very, very close. Now, if I, a word of caution, if you're gonna, if you're gonna error one way or the other, you wanna under drill it. So if I stopped here, I can always drill a little more, but if I go too far and I go either past these threads or into these threads too much, I'm not gonna have much to hold on to. So this is the most critical. That second drill bit is your critical size. So we are using, again, 930 seconds all the way through, 5 sixteenths, uh, I wrote 12, but it's between 12 and 13 millimeters deep, 2164 for 2.3 and 3 eighths for 1.25. Like I said, there are letter bits that correspond almost the same. So if you have letter bits, use those. Um, we have both letter bits and these on the website, um, but you can use what you have, that's the ideal. So let's get going. Okay, so we're gonna use the drill chuck. Now, last week I was using the, um, the keyless chuck. I've, I'm gonna use the keyed chuck this time. I actually like it for, one for the um, tenon cutter, but I like it for these short bits. Now, I'm using the short bits. You don't have to use short bits. These are for other stuff and when I use the metal lathe. So uh, I'm just using what I've got. I wouldn't buy extra bits if I didn't need to and I don't need to here. So uh, first we're doing this, what size was it? I just said it, nine, 30 seconds. So we're gonna drill this through. It's not gonna take a whole lot of material out because we already drilled the six millimeter all the way through. So let's lock her down and let's unlock the lathe. So you can see it's kind of just a very light ribbon of cut, which is fine. Make sure you go all the way through though. You need that, that size to clear your uh, converter. So if you're using a cartridge, they're a little smaller, but a converter clears, well, the other way with the 930 seconds. All right. That's our through bit. Next, this is our critical one. This is our 5 sixteenths. And remember, we're going 12 and a half, I think it was, between 12 and 13. 13 is what I measured. I'd rather go a little under than over, but I'm gonna try to go right on. Lock her down. I am kind of locking this, not tightly, but I'm snug so that this doesn't move on me. And actually, I want to back this up. Get this up close. Whoop. And then this will just keep it from giving me side to side. OK. And I'm going to hold my drill chuck. What's a better angle? This one? Maybe. All right, and I can do this all in one pass because I'm not cutting a lot. Backing it up. Turn that off. Okay. And I've got my speed set at 700. Um, you know, drilling seven to 900 is what I always recommend, but if your lathe only goes a thousand, just adjust accordingly. Okay, this is our third drill bit. Anyone know the size? Shout it out. 2164. We're going for two and a half millimeters, which is quite very small. Two and a half millimeters. Right there. If you can see it. I mean, that's not a whole lot. So I'm kind of just eyeballing that on the drill where that's going to go. Get it up close. Lock it down. It's snug.
And you can always go in and measure uh, if you're not sure. You can measure your part. That one looks pretty good. All right, and then lastly, <clears throat> remember this last one is just barely anything. And in terms of your in terms of your nib, it's this little tiny nubbin on the end, which is like a millimeter wide. So looks huge on this paper, but that's only one millimeter. And that is your three eighths drill bit. Now I will tell you one thing. If you have a short lathe or you have a lathe that doesn't have the bed for long drill bits, these short bits are nice for that if you do have a space issue, but normally you can get away with anything. These do flex very little too, because they're so stubby and short. All right. So we're going one and a half millimeters from when we contact. Looks like it to me. All right, so there are our four drill bits. That is the in my mind, that was the trickiest part when I first started doing this because I would always feel like I had one off or one wasn't right, but that, that second drill bit is the most critical because that's where your threads start and stop. So now we're ready to tap this. We can grab our niche system with the tap because I already put it together. Now. Make sure this little sucker's clean. I should probably throw these in the ultrasonic and then oil them up so they don't rust or something, but I don't know what these are made out of. They don't seem to rust a lot, but they get little spots. Now I do like to lube the threads when I'm tapping. So we'll push this guy in here just before where it bottoms out. So I'm gonna back it up. All right. Now I'm gonna do this by hand. I'm not going to um, power up the lathe, but I'm going to push this way. I'm going to gently rotate and kind of push that way as I go, just like we showed with the other stuff. And I am spinning the lathe by hand on the hand wheel because that gives us kind of double the motion, back it up to loosen or to cut the threads, thread forward. And you can go a little extra on this. You don't have to but it doesn't hurt if it's a little more forward motion. All right, and that should be more than enough. And what's cool is you can see when I'm done, if I wanna just spin and look, the handle freely spins on this. So it's kind of nice that you can leave it in place, check everything out, make sure it looks good. And then you can kind of spin this back cause you got that free motion on there. And when I'm done with the threads, come right out. And there you can see our little bits of material that we just took out. And here's the rest of it. So easy as could be, right? Now, obviously, I kind of want to clean this before I do too much. Oh, the lathe stole my mic with the magnet. <laughs> Pulled it right off. But I can kind of gently test this. I'm going to put some WD-40 through it to clear any debris. But I can kind of see where this stops. Okay, that's good. Let's see. So if you can see it, it stops kind of on the outside of the collar, which tells me I'm hitting where my threads are. And if I thread it in, oh, it threads in nice. So that's pretty good. Now you could tweak that if you like your nib to sit on top of the, the section and have that little lip at the top, that's totally fine and that's your choice. Um, I like it to just sit down in there, that's pretty good. And then once we shape this, obviously that's gonna change the whole look of this. But that looks pretty good. So, that went way smoother than it could. I will warn you that this won't always go well. And Amy can attest to that about an hour before this live stream, I was working on one and it didn't go well and I was very annoyed with it, uh, but it'll happen. There's days where I can make 20 of these in a row and they all go perfect. And then the next day I break every single one and I leave, I just walk out because <laughs> they all break. So it's gonna happen. Let's clean these though. Let me show you the ultrasonic cleaner. 
Uh, let's clean these parts and I'll show you why we do that. In all this cutting, whether it be turning, sanding, tapping, threading, uh, we get a lot of debris and sometimes your little um, threads are packed with crap and obviously I've been using WD-40, but let's clean these so you can see that. I'm gonna take this out. Now the ultrasonic cleaner, uh, I don't think it matters what brand it is. I'll show you the one I have. Oh, let's see if I can get it under the camera here. All right. So I've had this one for years. Hold on, I might have you lift that up. Um, and really what you're doing is just cleaning the parts with vibration. So I'm gonna drop these in here. I don't think I've cleaned any of these. This is just water. I like to put some kind of mild cleaner like Simple Green or something. Oh, is it on? And Amy, kind of lift that tripod up and so you can see. But you'll see the, the WD-40 works out really quickly, all that cloud, that's the the WD-40 coming out in the water. But what you'll start to see is little dots of debris starting to come out from the inside. It might take a sec, but that's the dust will start to work out. So even if I blow this with air or use a brush, that stuff is packed into there and it really makes a huge difference. All that white is WD-40, that'll come right off. But I like to clean it. I'll use, like I said, the Simple Green or something mild. You could just use soapy water rinse it with clean water and then let them dry thoroughly. And then you can, you know, if you want to lube your threads some other way, you can certainly do that. Uh, but this really gets the inside clean and all of the debris that's packed in there clean. This brand, I don't know anything about it other than I've had it for years and I don't know where I got it. What does it say? Um, Kendall. Kendall. I mean, I don't really think the brand has any relevance unless it just doesn't work. Oh, here you can see the dots of debris starting to float. Uh, but any ultrasonic cleaner will work as long as it has really good vibration. Sometimes they do have heat like this one does. You can turn on, I rarely use the heat. Mostly I just use it for that vibrating. It is nice to have a little toothbrush or something to be able to brush the outside stuff with and uh, get it really clean. So I mentioned that last week. That's, that's what I use. Like I said, it doesn't matter. And you don't have to have an ultrasonic cleaner. So if you don't have one and you don't really want one, don't buy it. But I do use that for a lot of other stuff in the shop. So once you have it, you'll, you'll go, oh, I could clean it with this or that. So let's see where we're at. Now we got water. So we got our body. I'm gonna do this in front so I don't drip on the lathe. Our section. Oh man, these are beautiful. We don't even need to shape it. And our cap. So essentially the, and I'll quote, hard work is done, but the fun part and the other hard work is the shaping and the finishing, which we're gonna do next week. We'll turn these down. I'll show you the mandrels. We'll shape them, polish them, finish it up, and we'll make this a complete fountain pen. So. Are there any other questions before we sign off? That is making the section. It went pretty well, especially considering our technical difficulties and my previous uh, section making today. Uh, but it went pretty smooth. This looks like it's gonna work out really well. If you haven't watched the other videos, check out one and two. That's the tooling and the cap and body threading and drilling. Uh, and then next week we will wrap up this build. We do plan to do more custom pen stuff. After that, we're gonna do uh, making one with a clip, making a roller ball, and a couple other things. So if you have ideas you want us to do, let us know, and if we can, we will. But this is going to look really good. So next week we get to wrap it all up. I appreciate everybody hanging in there. Did I miss anything? Don't, don't forget the ornament contest if you haven't seen that. That's a big deal. But anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe and come back next week, and we will finish this fountain pen up, and we'll have a pretty cool fountain pen series. It'll be nice to finish this one too, so you can actually see all this come together. If you're wondering why we're breaking it up like this, because over an hour is a little tough to do on a live stream. 
and each section so far has been between 45 minutes and an hour and 10 minutes. So if we did it all at once, this would be like a three hour video uh, live stream, which might be a little tough. So it's kind of more fun to break it up and have it be a little shorter and more concise, I hope. But that, that was our thought behind it. So that's what we're sticking with. All right. So thanks for watching, everybody. See you next week.